we're back at the November ZBA meeting having continued from October. And I see some people are still connecting. So we'll wait for that process to occur. Okay, everybody on? I think they are. <clears throat> All right, we continued last time to allow the applicant to reach out to the planning board and see what they could uh, obtain by way of um, background information on what they were told previously. Any luck? Um, yeah, so Roger, hi, guys. I'm in my vehicle again, so it's a little dark in here. I hope you, that doesn't bother anybody. Um, I'm sorry, so, could I just have the name, please? Oh, I'm Harlan Bean. Harlan, oh, thank you. You bet. Um, so from our from the first hearing that we had, um, what we got out of it was uh, there was kind of a stumbling block with that 1987 uh, bylaw or what was in the bylaws. And we had talked about how Brad and I had gone to the planning board prior to doing any of this. And that was in December of 2020. Um, I did make some attempts to reach out to Don Sluter. Uh, Don is no longer on the planning board and my attempts to get in touch with him have failed. Uh, I was not even able to get him at his house, unfortunately. Um, but all right. Um, I, I learned a few things. When we went to the planning board, we asked them, uh, we gave them our proposal and asked them to review it to make sure it was okay with the bylaws and that what we wanted to do was sufficient with what they had. Um, as we had mentioned in that, it was a, a Zoom meeting similar to this. And I we looked for the recordings, we could not find them, um, but they indicated that everything looked good to them. Uh, Judy Marklin was also in on that meeting. They indicated that everything looked good to them. It, it followed the bylaws, um, but they don't have the authority. There's no mechanism in the town of Waitley for anybody to give guidance prior to doing a flag lot or anything else. And they can't endorse a flag lot plan without the ZBA's uh, in, you know, approval. So our hang up here and what I think we need from you guys is the flag lot. We need some interpretation and clarity on what you've indicated the stumbling block is. And would anybody mind if I read um, that particular line A and we went through the clarity on it? Okay. Okay. Uh, it, I mean, it states a flag lot may, you know, because it's very, it, when we first met on this Zoom meeting, it was very hard for us to interpret and understand this, this bylaw. So I've spent a lot of time and many others that are on this meeting have spent a lot of time researching this. A flag lot may Excuse only me, be created. Mr. Yes. Bean, are you reading uh, the bylaw as it was back in 1987 or, or, the I'm reading the I'm reading the current bylaw the current 171.24.1 um as it's amended currently. Thank you. Yep. And it states a flag lot may only be created by subdividing one lot which was in existence at the time of adoption of this flag lot bylaw amendment added April 27th, 1987. In our last meeting, I think we all agreed, I believe that you guys agreed that this lot was in, in existence prior to 1987. I think um, I, heard, I heard the exact opposite. Well. From your surveyor. I This lot was certainly at 17 dash zero dash the, the lot, I thought we had agreed on that, Roger, and you had said, hey, yes, this meets the 1987, the original lot meets the 1987 uh, criteria. I don't know how it couldn't be 
considered as being in existence prior to 1987. The only um, the only question on it was the McDonough lot that had been taken out. But if you recall in the last meeting, you guys, Roger, you had said that we were going to we're going to take that as being separate because that had its own road frontage and wouldn't be considered as part of that lot. So I'm going to continue reading on this. And it says, you know, prior to 1987, which conforms to all of the provisions of the zoning bylaw, which the lot size and everything does conform, except that the original lot from which the flag lot is created has not had continuous land in common ownership sufficient to create a standard lot with the normal frontage requirements since the adoption of this flag lot by law amendment. The, we do not own, there is no common ownership, which would be family ownership. We do not own any contiguous land, which we learned is connecting and, and or abutting land. We don't own any connecting or abutting land that has normal frontage requirements. So we meet the criteria of this section as we interpret it and as we've researched it. Well, let's just cut to the core. The lot in the middle of the plan was conveyed out in March. And so the but lot- the original- Hold on. The original- so, Hold on, hold on. So that the lot in question is now, if you will, a horseshoe around that recently conveyed out March 2023 lot, so that the lot as it exists right now and is the subject of this application did not exist in 1987. It was altered and reshaped in 2023. And as far as contiguous land is concerned, that middle 200 feet of frontage was contiguous with the remaining portions of the horseshoe up until March of 2023. So that's the problem is that whether it was on planning board advice, or mayor's advice or, or, or poor advice, this middle piece was taken out of the equation and is now front and center when we look at a, a plan that you're asking us to um, consider under the flag lot. And so <clears throat> we're open to, I would say, reasonable interpretation, but this is not reasonable interpretation. This is just ignoring facts that you that yourselves have presented to us. You've presented Roger, a plan that shows that conveyance. We Roger, if I well, may, may I speak? Um, so there's no verbiage in, in your bylaws, um, that say it says any lot that was in existence prior to 1987, the lot in question, the lot that my father now owns was in existence prior to 1987. It's been, I disagree, but, but, but I disagree. Uh, well, that's, I think that's, that's the conf confusing part that that lot was there. I, I think. Not the remaining lot, not the remaining lot, which is the subject. Okay, okay, but that situation. that's not worded in the bylaws, is what I'm saying. It's not, the lot was there. I, I think maybe if the bylaws, if they said a lot unchanged since 1987, um, you know, if if a lot eligible for a flag lot has to remain unchanged since 19, that's what I'm looking at. A lot that was in in existence in 1987. It's the same lot. It's been, you know, passed down since from my grandfather to my grandfather to my grandmother to my father, and a couple lots have been taken out, but that lot is still in existence. It's been changed to me that the lot's been changed, but it's it's not. It's it's been in, in existence prior to 1987. Is my that's how when I we read that law, that bylaw. When we took Bradley's lot out, that's when we created the sub the flag lot. 
And this provision says the flag lot is created. It was created with the creation of Brad's lot. Now, it, it doesn't say sold. Brad happened to be ready to go with his house lot sooner than Brett was. That's why land was conveyed to Brad in March of this year. And Brett is just waiting for this approval to have that conveyed to him. But the flag lot was indeed shaped then. We went back and we found some, some other things in Waitley. Oddly enough, in 1988, the year after this uh, 1987 flag lot provision was put in, there was a flag lot in Waitley on West Road, which was cut out from a, a, an existing lot that was in existence prior to 1987. And that lot was approved um, almost under the same exact scenario of this one. The other lots within that main lot were sold prior to the flag lot. But, you know, we went back and did some research into previous flag lots in Waitley since 1987. And we found that the very first one that was applied for and granted was actually a very similar situation. The land hadn't transferred until, you know, some of the land transferred before night, before the flag lot, and then the flag lot transferred in 1988. Um, I, you know, I don't know how you can interpret it other than how we're interpreting it. As, as far as, you know, you guys use the Sibley project or, or, or property as an example. That's not even similar. Sibley's had contiguous land in common ownership that did meet the road frontage requirement. Hence the line that goes over and adds on to their property and gives them their frontage. They had contiguous land in common ownership. We do not. So that, that example isn't exactly accurate. You know, and I, I just don't know I don't know. I mean, even if it was interpreted some other way, we're, we're talking March of 2023 to when we started this September of 2023. Um, all of our neighbors are in support of this. Uh, the the purpose, if you read the purpose of your zoning bylaws, they would support us doing this rather than putting the land over in wetlands um, and using up, you know, farm space, we, we would like to increase our farm and, and do continue farming. But if we can't do this flag lot the way it is, we're going to have to get real creative with the conservation committee and, and and do a heck of a lot of remediation to somehow figure out driveways and, and access in far, wet, wet, wet farmland. So I don't know. I, I'm at a stumbling block with how this is not interpreted, interpreted, you know, as we're interpreting it. You know, we, we had a couple of attorneys take a look at it. One of them is on the, in the Zoom meeting with us. And, um, you know, they, I spoke with one of my friends who was a judge. He did not want to come on the Zoom meeting because he's a judge. But he, he interpreted it the same way that we, had, you know, anticipated he would. Um, the, the lawyer in question, I believe, is muted. We can't hear you. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. 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 Hi, Roger. It's Bob Spencer. Um, in looking at this bylaw, it says the original lot, not the created lot. It says the original lot. So, so I think that's critical to this. And then it talks about contiguous land, not the existing land. So I think Harlan is right that you look to the abutting land, not to the land within the original lot. And that's how it would make sense to interpret this. So let's give a name to the middle lot there. I don't know that it's got a name on the plan. Um, do, you, do you want me to pull it up, Roger? Sure. 
Is this the right, the right one? We don't see it. Oh. Okay, let me try that again. It's right here. Yeah. You see it? I can see it, yes. Yeah, we can see it. All right, so it says now formally uh, Brandy and Bradley Bean. What do we want to call that? Do we want to call that lot A just for the discussion here? Sure. All right. So you're telling me, Bob, that you don't believe that lot A is part of the concept of contiguous land with the proposed flag lot? I do, I do not. I would look at that map and... I would say if that land over that shows Etzel, if that was contiguous land, then that would not be allowed. Which one? The one at Etzel near right yeah. to the to the west of the that would be contiguous land. Adjacent to. So that I actually looked up the legal definition and it is adjacent to, not part of. But why isn't lot A adjacent to the flag? Because lot A is from the original lot. It says in the bylaw, talks about the original lot. And then it talks about contiguous land to the original lot. That's mm -hmm. why. I have no problem if the other board members agree submitting this question to the town council. We've done that before with some of these thorny questions. I'll be the first one to agree this was poorly drafted. And the truth of the matter is the planning board is the drafting body. So uh, we've wrestled with some definitions here for years. But um, I believe the questions I'm asking are based on the way we have interpreted it for years. But if others on the board are, are um, of a mind to ask town council to weigh in, I'd be in favor. I would of agree. I would agree. Hold on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. I'm asking other members of the board. Oh, yeah. I'd like. I'd like to hear from town council, Roger. Okay. Kristen, Fred. I'm not a lawyer. I mean, this lot for the Etzels is the contiguous one. And then well, what's that's correct. What's over here where this arrow is? That's that's other bean land. Other that's bean part land. that that that's also part of the original lot. So are we saying so is the question because this lot was cut out? No. No, it's this lot, lot A. Lot A was cut out. Brandy's and Bradley's. Was okay. Because the original lot includes the, the flag lot, lot A, and some other land that's abutting the Etzels. That's the original lot. Right. So the so this was all part of the original lot, and now Correct. they're trying to cut out. The flag lot. Correct. So if, if you consider all of this part of the original lot, then you can make a flag lot. But if Correct. this is not part of the original lot, it doesn't really meet our definition of a flat, you know, I mean, it's because it's already been divided once. But that is part of the original lot. Right. Well, Roger, you're the legal mind. Well, the question is, do, do you want to ask, there's a, a two two members that are willing to ask town council, do you want to join in that request for a clarification from town council? Yeah, I said it's going to make a difference, Roger. Uh, they're going to give an opinion that's going to come down to the board here deciding whether we agree kind of with that opinion or not. Don't we have enough information today to make that decision? I guess I'm holding out a 
I'm holding out a lifeline to the applicant. So our, our question well, is whether this was all considered part of the original lot. If it's part well, of the I mean, original. that is the definition of the original lot. I mean, that is the original lot. It doesn't talk about the created lot. It talks about the original lot. So to me, it seems pretty clear. Roger. It would make sense. It would make sense from a development perspective too. Like if you have a budding land, then then that would defeat the purpose of the flag lot. Because the flag lot is basically to condense. So so that that would give kind of the interpretive meaning to the to the provision in a way that's rational and reasonable. I think what what's is it making what's not clear here? We show a map and we say this is original, this isn't, this was divided, this was this was added. I, I'm not sure what we're actually looking at and considering. I think there needs to be labels or the just, original lot was divided, correct. Yeah. But the bylaw talks about contiguous land to the original lot. Well, that's the, what it talks about. The idea that we've always worked under is that you can get, um, let's just say, in an area where there's 200 feet of zoning required, and if you have 300 um, feet, you already have your house in the 200 foot parcel, and there's the remaining 100 feet that so you got a lot of acreage in the back. The concept was you could get a flag lot into that extra 100 acres because you have all this back um, area for development. And I haven't seen them where you have other land to the left of A, which has got 200 feet, which would be a building lot. And then the petitioner says, okay, but I, I don't want to build there for X, Y, and Z. And I understand the reason why they don't want to build there, but I, I haven't seen that. And it's contrary to the understanding that we've always worked with, that you get one, one free lot, you don't get to reserve another lot for some other purposes. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know why your surveyor didn't move the lines over a little bit, and so that uh, the flag lot could have a regular amount of frontage. It seems like you could do that and keep, the, keep that pasture land uh, preserved for farming. You don't need that amount of frontage for the pasture land. That, but that's how, how do I, how do I, um, what happens? How do I pasture my animals? How do I have a farm on land that I don't own or my son's and daughter's future from me? That, that needs to be separate for the farm. I mean, what if, what if there was a problem, uh, you know, whatever kind of domestic problem, you know, family feud type thing, 20, 30 years from now, and um, farmland was partially owned by this person and partially owned for, by that person? I've no, I'm just that. talking about the angle of the two boundaries on parcel A can be more severe to the left, cutting into well, the remaining frontage and then giving extra frontage to the flag lot to make it the that's, all, that's all wet there that you can't build there even if you want you wouldn't, you wouldn't be building there you would just be on paper taking area from it to give enough to the remaining lots but your, your road frontage your road frontage well i i guess you're right in that in that case but we looked at the requirements for a flag lot we clearly thought we met them the planning board had clearly indicated to us that that they felt, you know, at least one of the board members at that time felt we met them, and we did this. You made a comment earlier that you've always gone on the premise that the lot would exclude Brandy and Brad's lot. That's not the case because in 1988, the ZBA didn't go on that premise on the lot I referred to on Westbrook Road, and there was plenty of 
available road frontage on that particular parcel. So in 1988, the year after that, this provision was put in, they followed they followed the direction that we feel we we have laid out here. And I mean, I, I just feel like we're splitting hairs in interpretation on something that we're trying to preserve farmland, reduce the impact. Our neighbors are, are very supportive of this so they can still see the cattle out in the pasture so they don't see roads going up through the fields and all that stuff. And, and I, I honestly don't, I, I, I don't really totally understand. I am very much for following the, the, the rules and the laws and the bylaws. And I think we've done this here. Can I ask a question? So this yes. 219 feet of frontage, this is on the wet pasture land, correct? Correct. Yes. And right just a little bit above, um, if you scroll to the south, right there, right there, there is an actual, the other direction, there is an actual, right about there, there is an actual pond there. And that Here? pond, you know, yep, somewhere right in that area, there is, there is a pond and several springs with running water that drain all the way through that field under the road and create a brook. So, so Harley, there, there was, yep. Can, here's my question. So why are you trying to retain this frontage? I mean, this lot can stay as a lot without the frontage, correct? So why I, not I mean, just- I mean, it can. Right, so can and, I and, and, and then if you, if you moved the frontage to the new lot, then that lot it would then become unbuildable. So the only reason why to hold on to the frontage there was is to create a building lot, correct? Well, you can't build there. You'd have to do some road work. You could potentially build up top here, but you know, my sons would like to continue farming that area. We, he uh, he can like farm it no matter that. what the frontage is, right? Yes, but not if not if three different people own it. We don't want to create a horseshoe around Bradley and Brandy's. That doesn't seem to make sense. We don't even have approval on driveways yet. Um, I, I don't. Then, then we'll, I, we have to actually then talk to our the town lawyer. So because, I mean, you have the frontage. I don't know why you wouldn't want to move it over to the flag lot. I mean, we're, unless, we're unless you plan to build there or sell it as a as a building lot at some point in the future, which is, you know, absolutely, yeah, absolutely mean, by, not by reconfiguring absolutely. the boundary lines. It's a surveying question to reconfiguring the boundary lines. It, so, Roger, to speak to the point about uh, collapsing that right next to lot oh. A the, to the left of it to collapse that down to give the space to the flag lot. If you were to take the uh, property line that goes to the road on lot A, if you were to move that 100 feet to the left, then that would be that would be too wet to put a driveway. It wouldn't make sense to put a driveway. It would take there. their driveway away from them. You right. can put the driveway wherever you want, right? No, no, you can't. It has to be on the front on the frontage. The 200 feet of frontage has to be your access to the to the and if we move their line over to get gain frontage for the other one, then their frontage, they would lose, they would no longer own their driveway. And they couldn't put one over in that other spot because like we've said, it's too wet. Right, as you see the, the driveway dog legs to the right there, that's where it has to be. It can't go over to the west anymore. So Scott Jack, without substantial. Let me address this to Bob Spencer, your lawyer. So it seems like what you, talking about is that you have a hardship and it seems like what you ought to consider is simultaneously submitting a variance and a, a flag lot and 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 under the variance procedure we can consider the types of topographical hardships that you're talking about but you know you can just it's easy to say it at the hearing and without an actual application where we can consider specific points, it's, it, 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 I don't think it carries the day. And the other thing is, 
1988. So, as it turns out, we have a board with a lot of longevity. I believe Bob, Deborah, and I were on the board in 1988. I don't have any memory of what we did then. You want us to consider what we might have done then? You, you come forward with the, a copy of the approval at that point, and we can just compare apples to apples. But just saying that we've done something in 1988, which is the same as saying that the planning board told you something in 2020. I mean, it's it's words, but it's not really, it's not the type of evidence that we rely upon when we make these decisions. I mean, we consider ourselves, um, the word is a quasi judicial board. You know, we're not a court, but we're not we're not just taking arguments that are just you know up in the air. We 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 look at things. We try to analyze things. We do think about the future and the presidential value of our decisions. And so, I think if I were you, I would let, say sure. Let's ask the town council because it it doesn't seem like it's going away without that. Just, it's just me, but you may want to you want to go off the record and talk to your attorney about it. I, I think, um, Roger, what what it comes down to, at least to us, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the laws are what they are, and we can split hairs about how to interpret them. But where they want to put their house, if you can scroll to the south, um, yep. Where they want to put their house, it's set back into the woods. They're going to build a common driveway off our driveway. The the lot that my father owns now, because we put our lot where it is, which was recommended to us by the planning board, his lot is now a horseshoe. If they were to take this flag lot, that would eliminate that horseshoe. It would clean that up. And it would still leave... If you look by the compass there where all the pasture land is, that would leave my father's pasture land in his ownership. Um, it, it wouldn't move any boundaries into wetlands. I, I, I just, I think what Brett and Kaylee are, are trying to do with this lot, as far as the mission of the planning board and the mission of the zoning board, conserving land, um, making the most appropriate use of the land, I, I think what they're trying to do just Taking the bylaws in, out, of, out of the question, I think that just makes the most sense, um, just just looking at it. I mean, it if if it's not approved, they'll have, they'll have to do a horseshoe completely around us. That would mean part of that pasture, which I own part of that pasture, they would own to the east. They would also own to the west. That pasture would be owned by three different people when it's farmed by one person. I I just, what they have here, what they have drafted, to me makes the most sense, the most common sense. And that's, I think that's where we're getting tripped up. I, I understand there's there's legal questions and interpretation questions, but just it, it just seems to make the most sense. And I'd like to hear um, the opinions of the other members of the board on what they think of that. I do, I do just want to add one more thing, though. When somebody had asked about why we didn't move our frontage over to um, where the wetlands is, and we actually had to do a lot to even get a driveway within 10 feet of that wetlands. So if we had frontage more towards the left side instead, we would have been putting a driveway in the middle directly in the middle of a field instead of up along the side because there is a pond right there. So you wouldn't be able to put a driveway to the left of where the driveway is shown in this. There's a pond. Is Correct. There right there. Yep, right there. So um, I guess to like cut it a little bit shorter here and just like get through this. Um, you know, if you want to have town council look at it, that I guess that's up to you guys. I guess common sense, you know, I mentioned the 1988 ruling, and Roger, it's not necessarily up to me to remember, you know, for you to remember what was going on in 88. But, I mean, clearly Ben flag lots under cer similar circumstances approved. And I would just like to know, I mean, 
can't we all see the common sense in, in doing this the way we have it laid out? I mean, for protection, I mean, if you look at the purposes and everything of all the zoning bylaws, one of the primary things is to protect the property. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So I think Bob's interpretation um, and, and questioning, you know, the, the verbiage of the bylaw, I, I mean, if 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 you guys have your minds set that that you want to stick with you know not what we interpret that bylaw to read then perhaps we should you know have it viewed by town council and, and see what they say but i just can't see how this is not looked at as the common sense right thing to do the property well, it, it, it might be common sense you know, but that doesn't mean that that we can change what the you know the actual bylaw says. I mean, especially. I mean, well, you don't have to change the bylaw. It's, it's a you can interpret the bylaw in 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 a way that makes sense to the intent of the bylaw. Um, it does talk about an original lot and contiguous land. Contiguous land is not within a lot. It is abutting a lot that is contiguous land but it abuts, they, a abuts, but a abuts the flag line what's that a, but a, a is but that's the, the original, original that's a, the original lot though a currently the original, abuts the flag, the flag lot. lot is within the original lot okay. i'm and not sure so we can argue on i'm not going to agree that a does not um that the a's land is not contiguous with the flag line uh, there's just there's but uh, town town council, council, the bylaw the, talks the, about the town original council would have to convince me of that. And, and, and you guys understand this, to, to, to approve this, it requires the unanimous vote of the board. So if you can read between the lines, I think you'd want. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, if that's. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, you know, if you're willing and to allow us to have town council look at that, you know, Whatever that requires, if you need something additional from us, you know, let's let's do that. Well, the way it works is <laughs> there's some background static. If someone could put that off, I think that, yeah. There's the way it works is um, we seek permission from the town administrator to reach out to the town council. That's never been denied. That won't be a problem. When there's another attorney involved, I would then um draft a uh, series of questions to ask town council and submit them to bob spencer first for him to review so we have a cohesive set of uh, requests and then we submit them and then he usually gets back within the the four-week period before the next meeting occurs so that would be we would then schedule for december So if that works for everybody, I would propose the, our board right now uh, vote it, that we follow that. Any uh, any objections from anybody? No objection from me. I'll second that. Roger, I will not be at the December 7th meeting. Oh, so we can... Um, you still have Fred and Kristen. You still have Fred and Kristen. Okay. That's right. And Mary, we have something already scheduled for December 7th? Yes. One item coming up, yeah. I mean, has the legal notice gone out? No, no, no. I haven't written it yet. I, I just got the date okay that the, we were going to have a quorum. So now I have to write. First, I have to apply for the, you know, the Zoom information and then write that into the ad and get the approval and send it. We can still change it to a different date if need be if that's what you're asking well it's just what i was considering um we can do december 7th and as far as the time for them have you booked the first lot with the other parties yet i haven't spoken to them yet no i, I kind of wanted to have this meeting in case there was anything to talk about like we're doing now all right Good idea. Excellent. So, so we'll schedule this being here in the first. 
I'm, uh, I'm getting an awful lot of garbled background talk. I can't understand. Does anyone else hear that? Hear no? Yes, we all do. So the the what what are you saying about the date, Roger? This being the first hearing at six forty p.m. on December seventh. Bean will be number one. He's saying that the meeting for for this, the continuation of this meeting will be number one. Roger, I think that I've turned everybody on and off, and I think the actual static is coming from you. I'm, I'm embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've muted everybody to try to get rid of it, and the only one I wouldn't mute is you. <laughs> well, I'll stop speaking. <laughs> And oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I'm I, sorry. I did write to her last minute today. I, I did tell her that, well, I, I did tell her they were 640. Six so that, that's, that's what she got from me, 640 on the 7th. Let's do seven fifteen. So the other one will be at seven forty. We'll continue this on December seventh at seven fifteen. And in the meantime, there will be inquiries. Will be to inquiries. Count it's not you, Roger. As a neighbor, can I just jump in real quick? Sure. Um, so my name is Steve Huntley, 51 Weber Road. We are west of the Bean property. Um, I'm in my car. I'm sorry if I'm ecstatic. Uh, basically, we're 100% in support of the way it's drawn up. The way you talk about uh, encroaching into swampland really is a concern. Um, we're upstream of them, as they say. And... Uh, my trails have just been washed out like you wouldn't believe this past summer because of my theory. I'll say the, the change in the climate and the amount of water we're seeing on an annual basis that we just didn't see 12 years ago when we moved in. Um, never mind 1987 when these bylaws were created. So I know I'm crossing the boundaries of multiple uh, bodies that design these things and think about wetlands and think about all these other uh, things. But if there's any flexibility the town could have because of that very reason, it would be greatly appreciated for our neighborhood. Also, the other thing I'll throw out there, you know, um, and I wasn't here in 87. I came, like I said, 12 years ago. And when we bought our house, there was a three as the first number towards purchase. And now you can't get much without a seven as the first number for purchase out in West Waitley. So to keep families together, to keep family lands generationally advancing should be really important to the town of Waitley. And that should mean something too, if any flexibility can be given or any interpretations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll, I'll do what I said I was going to do. Bob, I'll reach out to you, Bob Spencer. Thank you very much, guys, and I appreciate you extending this and um, allowing us uh, to take this to where hopefully we can get it to, to work out. So I do appreciate that greatly. Okay, we have some minutes to review, internal minutes, so we're going to do that next. Thank you. Right, thank you, everyone. You didn't play Ron and Hildy. Okay, Mary, I read the minutes. I have no changes. Are we, we talking about May 4th now, the first one? Both of them. That you submitted. Okay.
Any other readers of the minutes? I don't think I was there. Do you want me to pull it up? Yeah, I, I looked at it and didn't have any problems with what was written. I, I same way I read it, I thought it was accurate. Okay. And okay. Bob, you're right, you weren't there for it. For for May 4th. I guess you were for June 1st, but once? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the minutes of May 4th, 2023. Second. And everybody agrees. Everybody votes to approve them as yes. they are. Roll we'll call. Aye. And I abstain. It does seem like the feedback has gone away. And what about June 1st minutes? That was really short. Well, that was short because they didn't show up. We, we couldn't do anything. The simplicity is. <laughs> Okay. I couldn't understand. I approve. I approve. I approve. Did I get it wrong that you were there for this one, Bob? Geez, I was trying to find I was trying to find notes and I I I, I can't. June first sounds like a middle of track stuff, so I'm not entirely sure because our meets are Thursday, Saturday, and I might have been at a meet. But mm -hmm. What was it? What was the um, the topic? What, what we were doing was continuing uh, the hearing for Dory Mead, who wanted to build an addition at Twenty Seven Masterson oh, Road. Since I wasn't there for the first, oh, that meeting, you, I wouldn't you, have been you're able. Probably to go right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Roger, is it appropriate to? ask you a question to ask town council please well my concern is with the whole definition of a flag lot let's say that you needed 200 feet of frontage and you had a piece of property that was 1100 feet can you divide that into five lots and a flag lot or is it you can okay. no no I, i'm 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 oh. saying, i understand your question right because the only reason I ask that is that from the original lot, they already created a lot. Exactly. And I think that's the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. But um, then, you, you know, when you're talking about contiguous and uh, uh, all I'm saying is that if there's 1,100 feet of frontage, you can't do five 200 foot parcels plus get a flag lot i thought a flag lot was meant to be is it meant to be if you had you know 296 feet of frontage and so you could get 200 as a lot and then 96 to lead to the back that's what i thought it was so that you could make the best use of the property you had abutting the, or on the road as opposed to and therefore um, what you said to them at the very end regarding, um, you know, the precedential nature of this, there are lots of pieces of property that are owned by, by farmers that go substantially along roadways. I don't think the flag lot was designed to give them the ability to divide it, let's say 10 times and then have a flag lot on the, uh, you know, what could well, have been the 11th. The bonus, so, right. A little bonus. The bonus. Right. That was my that was my question that just to for clarity the funny, purposes. The funny thing is, is that they actually have enough frontage, but they would have to put the driveway though 
where the where the wetlands are is that is that the question? I mean, I wasn't even sure why they wouldn't use the frontage they have. Well, it, 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 this is again, a, um, uh, you know, I, I remember cases where common sense would say we should do, we should allow this. Like I remember on Swamp Road, the tree uh, blocking, common sense says rather than cut the tree down, we should have, but that's not what the law says. And, uh, you know, we, we just have to be careful in this particular case, maybe common sense might apply. But what about down the road when someone's got that 1,100 feet of frontage? I know exactly so, what you're saying, Bob. And I okay. think I think about that tree at least yes. once, once a year when they go down Swamp Road. Although that tree might be dead by now. Who knows? I, yeah, I, I think it's gone. Well, no, I know. No, they, they did cut it. They cut it. Yeah, they cut it. They had to they cut built it. A, they built a pretty nice architecturally right. um, appealing garage. But, but I'm just and saying, I I'm just saying yeah. we've been on it long enough that... Maybe the that tree would have died of natural yeah. growth by now. That, that's and, my way of joking. That right. I don't remember a 90, 1988 case either about, I'm not sure I was on the board in 88. I might have been an alternate back in 88. Wasn't Bob Cook? I don't know. I might have been dating myself a little too much too. Yeah, 88. Because I only moved to town in 88. Right. I, yeah, I was probably not on until 89. Yeah. What the heck? Time yeah, flies. It, Time flies. <laughs> All right, and it really, it really is incumbent upon the Bean family to produce that case, the information about that case for us, not for us to go looking for it to see if they're right. They need to, they need to prove it that they're I right. Okay. Yeah. That was my only question. All right, good seeing everybody. Yes, indeed. I'm going to stop the recording. Do we need to formally adjourn or something? Just just one thing. The, the reason I'm not going to be there is that my number one uh, girl athlete was awarded the superintendent's award and the dinner in her honor, along with the other superintendent awards in this area, is that night. And I'm not going to miss that. Good. Have a great right. Have a great night. Yeah. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, I'm, I'm going right. to stop the recording.